Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're working on our Deadpool Funko Pop character. In this session we're looking at the weight painting, so if you've got any issues with your rig, moving objects that it shouldn't, then weight painting should sort it out. Do take a look at the beginner's guide to animation playlist because there's more about weight painting there and a more beginner's guide there. If this is too confusing and you want a full beginner's guide to weight painting, then let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Okay, so here's where we got to last time and we're ready to weight paint. So we've seen the problem before. If I click on the head bone and I'm in pose mode with my rig and press R to rotate, you can see the head is squishing up in strange ways. Let's click on the head and then go across to weight paint mode down here. Now it's tricky to see when you've got material preview mode on, so let's go across to solid mode and you can start to see the influence of the bone. So we know that these are the deformation bones, the green bones going down the middle here that the rig has made. And I'll just select the rig again so you can see those. So they're in this layer here, so you must have that layer visible to see those deformation bones. If I click on that, you can see only the deformation bones. And that may be helpful to you if the other bones are getting in the way. I like to have them all present, then I can move my shape around and pose the model to see how the weights are getting on. Okay, so back to the head object and into weight painting. Now this goes from a scale from red right through to blue. We can start to see the blues here, and that's where our influence is fading from this bone we have selected on our rig. So it knows which bone you last selected. If I shift click on the rig now and go to pose mode, control P, and then click back on my head, remember I'm in lock object mode, so I'm able to do that. I can select this bone here, and you can see the influence it has on this shape. But if I select this deformation bone here, you can see that that one's having some influence on the head as well. And if I click down here, no, it's just this one here and this one here. So the blue area is fine, that's got no influence of this bone, but it has some here. Now there's a couple of ways of sorting this out. I'll show you the weight painting way first. So if I click on my bone with control left click, and that's how you can go around your bones, selecting the different ones. But I've still got the head selected, but I can see the different influence by control left clicking. So basically we need to remove the influence off these bones and put this bone at 100%. Okay, the selection thing can be a little bit confusing, so just so it doesn't get confusing, I'm going to deselect everything. So I'll go back to object mode and Alt A. So start off by selecting your rig and go to pose mode. Now remember, don't have lock object modes on, it's much easier without it. So I'll shift select the head, and now when I go to weight paint mode, the bone that I had selected is being shown and its influence on the head is being shown. And I can control left click to click on different bones to choose what I'm weight painting. So I'm in weight painting mode. I'll go to the tool settings over here. You can also find these at the top here. And I've got my weight set to one. And I'm going to show you first how this won't work, but I'll make my brush bigger with F and just paint a weight of one on my mesh. Now there is a quicker way to this, but I'm just showing you the long way so you know how to do it with other bones if you have any issues. Now actually I can put X mirror on with this as well and I can paint across it. It doesn't always necessarily work the X mirror, but it will in this case. Okay, so that's got 100% influence. I'm going to go back to, I'm going to put control click on this one and R to rotate and it's working. I'm going to control click on this one, R to rotate. And if I pull this all the way down, can you see it still stretches? So even though we've got 100% weight on this bone here, it's still deforming down here. So this bone must still have some influence. Let's control left click on that. And it's actually slightly hard to get that bone because it's got a control bone right on top of it, but you can see it there. So you can just sort of keep clicking and you'll get to it. So it's still got some slight influence, even though we painted 100% with this bone here, as you can see there, it's still got that green. Now that's because if I go down to the options here, I think you can find these options here as well, yep. There's an auto normalize option. Can you see that at the top? So if I press auto normalize and go back to this bone here and make sure I'm painting over my object in these places. Now when I control click on the other bones, there's one, there's the other. Oh, it's still got a tiny bit of influence at the top here, but you can see it's taken off the influence. So this shape here can only ever reach a weight of one rather than more than one 
with the combination of this bone. It's a bit confusing, but if I click back on this bone, paint this area up here again, click back on this one, you can see that bit of influence that I've just got to get rid of here. And we're rid of that. Let's see if we're rid of the other one. And it looks like we're there. And it's nice that you can test these things out by going to the rig and choosing the control bones and rotating and you can see there's no influence left, which is great. There's a slightly quicker way if you know that one shape is going to only be linked with one bone. For example, I'll go back to object mode and select this object down here. I'll shift click on the armature and go to pose mode and let's start moving this IK bone here. So this big shape around here, if I press G to grab and move it outwards, you can see that this shape is moving with this hand. So some of these bones here are influencing this object. Now because this is a separate object on its own, it's fairly easy. We can select that object, Alt P to remove the armature from this, so clear the parent. And now you can see this bone is having no influence. I'll click back on this object and then back on the rig and select the bone I want it to be attached to. I'll just control left click to remove the other ones because it's not actually attached to the armature at the moment. Remember we control click when we're weight painting to choose different bones. So you only have to click on the bones now, you don't have to control click and then to parent, control P and parent to that bone. So this object should now be only parented to this one bone. So when I grab this area of my rig and move it, it's not influenced. But if I grab the foot IK, it's moving around with that bone, which is great. We need to do the same adaptation for this object and this object. And I'll show you a slightly different way for those as well. So this object here needs to be attached to this bone here. So I'll control left click to remove those make sure that's the only one selected. And let's come across to the bone and see what the bone is called. So deformation spine. So with this object selected, I can go to the object data properties and I can remove any other influence from the other bones. So I'm just pressing this minus sign here and def spine is the one I want. So I'll go right to the top, def shoulder left, and then just delete them all until I get down to def spine. Okay, so it should only be influenced by this bone now. So let's click on this one, D to grab, and you can see that working. We can do the same for this one, but it is a longer approach to do it like that. So we may as well Alt P to clear parent, select our rig again, make sure it's just that one bone selected, and Control P to link to bone. Let's test that out. And this is having no influence anymore. Okay, so that's a quick explanation of weight painting. Like I say, it can be a little confusing that, especially if it's your first time running through it, but hopefully that's given you some guidance and some things to practice. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.